Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains here. This is the place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Today is going to be a special edition of our podcast potluck. What? You don't never know what I'm going to be mixing up, stirring up, and serving. What to you? So I like to do these visually because uh, it's a different experience for me, and I like to get in the kitchen to see what's on and popping. <laughs> So today we are getting it straight from Johannesburg, South Africa. We've got a young thought leader. His name is Lucas Chakwe. He is now living in, um, oh my goodness, it fell off the tip of my tongue, in Israel in Tel Aviv, and he is doing his studies there, but he is an innovator, he's motivated, and his conversation is so heavy, you're going to need a crane to carry it, Brains, so let's welcome him to the edge, Lucas Chakwe. How you doing, boo? Thanks for having me. Hi, Brains. Hi, April. I'm doing really well. Thank you. Well, I'm so glad that you are here with us. I want to start out with your story. I want people to know who you are, some of the things that you endured in South Africa, and some of the self-limiting beliefs people tried to put on you. Talk to us about that. Exactly. Um, so basically, I come from an all black community in South Africa, where most families are not wealthy, including mine. And I live with, in a, with, a, with a family of six, and I have four siblings. So what's basically interesting with my story rather was how I kind of like viewed things on a different perspective than they were in my community. Because I live in a community where boundaries are set for you as a millennial that you have to, you know, go to school, go to university um, and work and just make a living off what you have out of that. But I wanted something more than that. I wanted to make an impact. And I never really had that like before, you know, it was just a thought process. And that really changed my mind and the way I thought about myself coming from such, you know, a community. What did your parents think? You know, were they encouraging? Um, basically, initially, my parents did not really believe in me. I mean, like, you know, we humans, right? We start right, believing right. when we action, you know, we don't just believe in words. So I literally had to act upon what I say to make them believe. And I really love how they kind of like changed throughout my process of, um, throughout my process of becoming a change agent and That's of right. becoming someone impactful in the world. And mm -hmm. to make such an example, I remember when I had to go to the United States to attend a multicultural camp that I've been selected for and received a full scholarship on. Um, I had to cover the flight uh, uh, funds for the flight tickets, but we had none of that in my family. And, you know, my parents were panicking and my father was like, why don't you just give it up? Because, I mean, we don't have money, mm -hmm. as you can see. I mean, why don't you just give it up? And I was like, no, father, I cannot do that. I need, I need to finish what I started, you know. I cannot just drop it out in the middle. And I went out there. I seeked sponsorship. I went to my teachers, asked for help. And in the end, I got the funds and I flew to the United States. Now, that literally changed the generation of my family. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it made, it didn't only make me believe in myself more, but it made my entire family see light in a way because my sister is now taking computer classes and my mother is now leading um after her company had returned she's now leading a daycare that she's um so she self-started herself and it's really doing great so i'm really proud that i took a step ahead you took leaps ahead tell us a little bit about your inspiration where do you get this drive and where did you get this motivation <laughs> seeing how that it wasn't put in, you know, in front of you every day. And I'm sure that there are other contributing factors there in Johannesburg and the living conditions. So um, where do you get this inspiration from? Um, first, as soon as I felt like that I needed something, you know, bigger than me, I needed to embed something that's greater than me. I need to be more impactful and I need to make meaning, a meaningful change in the world. I started reading books such as The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Mm. And the book actually taught me about how to be proactive, you know, how, like it actually, it actually took me through all the habits, you know, beginning with an end in, in mind, synergy and all of that. And while I was reading the book, I was embedding that in me. So now while I was governing my own way on YouTube, I 
saw a video of Lisa Nichols mm. and wow, that literal video, it literally disrupted me, you know, it, <laughs> blow, it blew my mind away, you know, <laughs> and I started blew your wig said, back. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I blew my mind away. <laughs> so I was more interested in knowing what game changers are doing out there in the world, you know, and Lisa Nichols, how she kind of like transformed her life, you know, that really disrupted me. That really made me want to, that really, that made me want more of life, you know, and I was able to give in, I was able to read more and more and more. And during my process of engaging with um, the Lisa Nichols tribe on Facebook, I came across Phil Bolander, whom I became friends with. And now I'm currently reading his book, Wings of Wisdom. And, you know, I'm never stopping April. The journey is just starting, you know, oh. it's about to begin. And I'm so excited that I have you know, game changers out there supporting me. Absolutely, absolutely. Innovators. So talk about a game changer. You went from Johannesburg and now you are in Tel Aviv. Tell us what that experience is like because that's a very dangerous part of the world. You're a young <laughs> black man, uh, you know, Definitely. Palestinians, you've got the, you know, you've, you've got the Israelis. It's on and popping over there. Tell me what that looks like. Give me a snapshot. Um, so basically, before I came to Tel Aviv, when, when I was considering to, you know, study abroad options, you know, I was looking at them papers, I was looking at what opportunities um, are available out there, and I came across Tel Aviv, you know, I never really expected myself to apply for a scholarship in Israel, mm -hmm. considering the fact that, you know, it's a country that's in the middle of a you know, conflict and it's, and everything is just under siege, you know? And I remember telling my friends and family about that. They were like, are you crazy? Are you really going to Tel Aviv? But what really went on in my mind at that point was that, you know, if I define myself as an agent of positive change, am I going to go to a place where, you know, there's no, there's nothing, you know, shifting, there's nothing that I can even fix. So I was like, you know, maybe let me try going to Israel, you know, see what I can learn and absorb there. And maybe I can contribute into, you know, finding solutions for the war. And, you know, being here has really been an amazing, an amazing journey for me because I've learned more, uh, I've learned more, I've engaged more with my peers. You know, I've been touring around the country and I've been attending, com I've been part of committees that are about finding solutions that are about addressing problems. And I guess I'm now the peace activist mm. and I'm really enjoying my life, you know? <laughs> oh, I love you. Peace to you. Uh, let Thanks. me ask you a little bit about the projects that you worked on, because not only are you a thought leader and a, a moving, raging, beautiful African millennial, tell me about the project, the sustainability project that you're working on for your country. Definitely. Um, so basically... The project actually knocked in my mind um, in the year of 2016. So basically, I recognized because I'm from an underprivileged um, community um, in Tembisa, I recognized that we had um, the, a constant cut of electricity. You know, we refer to it as load shedding, you know, not having electricity for about a week, you know, for like two days in a row. Wow. And that was really, it was not really enjoyable, you know, having to uh, get things done and not having electricity, you know. Mm -hmm what are you going to use to bath? What are you going to use to eat and stuff like that? Right, so I was right. like, okay, now I'm seeing the problem. Now, what can I do about the problem? Hmm. And I was like, okay, how about I go green this time? How about I use resources such as um, the greenhouse, you know, resources such as like the solar panel, kind of like combine the whole idea and see how it gets along. And uh, my, I titled my project Electro Greenhouse and I went to present it um, at a science fair and from that science fair, I won, I got third place in the regional level. And, you know, I went back home, developed my project, worked on the research process more, worked on how I can make it, um, how, how I can make it more sustainable and how I can make some sort of like a progression in it so that, you know, we have a constant flow of electricity. And then the following year, I went back to the same contest and then I got best energy efficiency project and I was titled the best in my region and I was nominated to present my project to the internationals and in the internationals there were 628 students from all over the world and in my category I got third place now that was really good feedback because it really showed me that you know from just an idea right. things can happen you know right. people can benefit from your ideas so as I said, I'm not stopping. I'm developing and developing and initiating new ideas out there in the world. 
Well, I am just so excited with you, and I am on Team Lucas Jacque for sure. Uh, Brains, I want you to definitely contribute to this young man's efforts by purchasing a copy of my book, on the Edge with April Mahoney. You can get it there. And this is Utter Magic. Contributions from the sale of this book is going to go towards his way, for sure. You know how I am, Brains. I'm all about paying it forward here on the Edge because he's a mover and a shaker. He's an innovator. He's a scientist. He's about sustainability. And he's a millennial, okay? This is what we, <laughs> this is what we need to encourage. This is what we need to support. And that's why we mix it up here on the edge with April Mahoney with podcast potlucks. So I want to thank you so much for being here with me today, Lucas Chakwe, uh, by way of Tel Aviv. I want you to be safe and keep your head up and do all that you can. Fight on, soldier. I'm with you. All right? Definitely. All right. Bye, brains. Peace and love. Peace, Lucas. Peace. Thank you.